Hi guys, I just wanted to hop on here and um, share something with everybody. This morning I was talking to a friend um, who recently, or kind of recently, um, gave their life back to God and it's just really got themselves planted in a church and they're taking groups and starting to read the word regularly, but um, they're really struggling with alcoholism. And, um, especially right now they're quarantined and they're stuck at home and, um, they are reading the word and they are, um, praying and all of these things, but, um, they were feeling very discouraged because they feel like their alcoholism is getting even worse right now in this moment. And, um, I wanted to come on here and encourage other people who struggle with addiction and alcoholism because I used to be addicted for more than 10 years. I was really addicted to methamphetamine and barbiturates. And if I couldn't get those things, then I would do alcohol or Coke. Uh, basically, if you had it, I wanted it. And, um, I mean, I, I remember people, my dealers would tell me, you, you need to go to rehab. And, um, I remember feeling like, I mean, I just did so much drugs and it, it was never enough, but it was better to be high than to go back to the life that I had before I started going, getting high. And, um, there, there was nothing that I had to be restored to previously in my life, except for that I wasn't with my son um, but at that time, the enemy was lying to me and I felt my son was better off without me. We're just going to say that. And so I was just driven on this road of getting high and that um, I didn't want to go back to depression and I was very broken. And anyways, there was nothing to go back to. And um, I, I too, one day just something happened. I went to jail. I was in jail for a little bit. They told me that I was going to do a year. And I was like, how the heck did I get here? I don't, I don't want to do a year in jail. And, um, I got myself planted in a church and I started to read the word and, and slowly, but surely I, I started to get set free. And every now and then I would still mess up and do drugs. And I, I'm going to tell you, I didn't have the faith to not do like to believe that I was never not going to do drugs. Like if they came by me or if, you know, somebody had it and I seen them doing that, I would just instantly, um, fall back and start doing drugs again. And then I would end up exactly where I was like instantly. I would, um, be burning myself. I would be suicidal. I would be completely out of control. Um, but I kept going and I kept, reading the word and I kept being connected with people. And, um, when I moved up here to big bear, I think I had like six months of sobriety when I first moved up here. I think that was about, um, five years ago or so. And, um, I was spending a lot of time in God's word. I was, I didn't know anybody up here. And uh, so I was just home. And then even when I would go outside, it was just like, you know, most of the cabins up here are rentals and I was just basically by myself and I didn't have a car at that time. And I was just getting into the word and getting into the word and I was worshiping God and I was praying and I, every day I was asking God, those are the different ways to get into God's presence. And every day I was asking him, fill me up with your presence, cover me, um, father God, just, you know, and I was speaking the word over myself and confessing things. And I, I got in a situation where, a relative came to my house and a sack of speed ended up in my hands. And instantly I saw myself getting a pipe at the liquor store. Instantly. My mom's a diabetic. She has needles. Instantly. I saw myself shooting up with drugs and I said, Oh my God, I've been, I've been struggling with the way I feel. I've been, um, you know, I'm struggling with my weight and, um, 
and I, I saw myself there and I, I was staring at it and I remember that this overwhelming feeling from the Holy Spirit came over me and he made me sick to my stomach and um, he told me very clearly I want you to go flush that in the toilet right now and I went to that toilet and I flushed it down the drain and I can say now that drugs no longer have a hold on me and that's because not because I'm perfect, not because I'm special, not because, you know, God wants to give it to me and not to you. It's because I was spending time with the Holy Spirit. It was because God's word was washing over me, even in times when I didn't understand his word. It says it's sharp, sharper than a two-edged sword, and it goes deeper than bone and marrow. And it was going deep inside me, and it was breaking things off of me. And I was spending time in his presence, and his presence brings the anointing that breaks yokes. And... um. You know, I'm not coming on here. It's hard for me to come on here. Um, but easy when I'm myself. But hard for me to come on here and reveal all this stuff to everybody. Um, and, and I'm not doing it so that I could try to convert you. I'm not doing it so that you can follow me. I just want you to know that Jesus Christ lives. And that same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead can live inside of you and it can set you free. There's, I mean, I'm not saying I don't have struggles. Um, I'm not saying that I don't get attacked, but it's different now. Like really, no matter what I know, I'm going to make it and I'm happier than I've ever been in my life. God makes everything that was used for my destruction. He turns it around for his purpose and he makes everything so beautiful. And I, I just felt like it was in my heart, you know, like get up on here, tell people, tell those ex drug addicts that I used to use with, you can do it and you can be happy. You know what I was like, you know, and, um, just to say, d don't give up, keep going you're going to make it. He's got you.